In this video, we're going to talk about the normal distribution or the bell-shaped curve. So let's begin by drawing a picture of that curve. And it's going to look something like that. Now right in the middle, we have the population mean represented by the Greek letter mu. And to the right of that, one standard deviation away, we have the Greek letter sigma, and this is one standard deviation to the left of the mean, and then this is two standard deviations away, and then three on both sides. All the way to the right we have infinity, and all the way to the left negative infinity. Now the area under the curve represents the probability of an event happening between two points. So the probability of an event happening between the mean and the first standard deviation, you can calculate it if you know the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. So within the first standard deviation of either side from the mean, there's a 68.268% chance that an event will happen in this region. And then within two standard deviations, the percentage is 95.45%. And then within three standard deviations of the mean, the percentage is going to be 99.73%. Now I hope that you're taking notes because you're going to need to know these numbers. It's going to help you solve some problems that are coming up soon. Now if we take this number, 68.268 and divided by 2. That's going to give us 34.134%. So that's the percentage of finding an event between the mean and the first standard deviation. Now the left side is going to be the same. It's going to be 34.134%. When you're dealing with a normal distribution curve or bell-shaped curve, you can have symmetry in this uh, problem. And keep in mind, the area of this region is 0.34134. It's the percentage as a decimal. So the area is going to be the same as the probability of an event happening within a certain region. Now, what percentage goes in this region? If you take the difference between these two numbers, so if you subtract 95.45 by 68.268, that will give you 27.182. Take that number divided by 2, and you should get 13.591. And this number is going to go on both sides. So that's the percentage of an event happening between the first and the second standard deviations of either side. Now to find the next number, follow the same process. So we're going to subtract these two numbers. 99.73 minus 95.45, that's 4.28, then divided by 2. So the percentage in this region is going to be 2.14%, and the same is true in that region as well. Now, to find the percentage that goes in those two regions. Keep in mind the total percentage from negative infinity to infinity is 100%. So take 100 and subtract it by 99.73. You should get 0.27. And when you divide that by 2, the answer in this region is going to be 0.135%. And the same is true for this area as well. So you may want to take a picture or at least write this down because you can use this to solve problems associated with the normal distribution curve. Now it's important to keep in mind that mu represents the population mean and sigma is the standard deviation. Now as we said before the probability of an event happening from negative infinity to infinity is a hundred percent. That's the total probability which means that the total area of this curve 
is 1. So if you add up all of these numbers, you should get 100%. And the left side, everything up to here, has to be 50%, which is 0.5 as a decimal. So now let's work on some practice problems. Number one, the test scores of a physics class with 800 students are distributed normally with a mean of 75 and a standard deviation of 7. Part A, what percentage of the class has a test score between 68 at 82. So feel free to pause the video and work on this problem. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to draw a picture that's similar to the picture that I had before but instead of using symbols such as mu and sigma I'm going to use numbers. Now we said that the mean is 75 and the standard deviation is 7. So the first thing I would recommend doing is putting the mean right in the middle. Then one standard deviation away from the mean, we're going to put the numbers as well. So we're going to add 7 to 75. 75 plus 7 is 82. And 75 minus 7 is 68. Now let's move another standard deviation away from the next number from 82 and 68. So 82 plus 7 is 89. 68 minus 7 is 61. Now let's do it one more time. 89 plus 7 is 96. 61 minus 7 is 54. And we could stop here. Now let's put the appropriate percentages in each region. So we know that within the first standard deviation, it's going to be 34.134%. And then between the first and the second standard deviation, it's going to be 13.591%. And between the second and the third, it's going to be 2.14%. And then for this region, 0.135%. So now we have everything that we need in order to get the answer. So let's calculate the probability or the percentage of the class that has a test score between 68 and 82. So x is going to be a random continuous variable that can vary beyond 75 or less than 75. Now all we need to do to get the answer is basically find the area under the curve between these two numbers. So we got to find the area of the shaded region. So all we need to do is simply add up the percentages between 68 and 82. So it's going to be 34.134 plus another 34.134. So that's going to be 68.268%. So that's the percentage of the class that has a test score between 68 and 82. Now there's a formula that you could use to get the same answer, in fact a more accurate answer, using calculus. Now if you're watching this video and if you haven't taken a calculus class, don't worry about it because the formula that I'm going to show you, you can easily use it with the appropriate calculator. And if you don't have a calculator, I can show you how to use it with an online calculator at Wolfram Alpha. So here's the formula that you need. The probability of finding an event between A and B is going to be the definite integral from A to B, E, E is the inverse of the natural log function, and then raised to the negative x minus the population mean. 
squared divided by 2 times the square of sigma, or the standard deviation. And this is all divided by sigma times the square root of 2 pi. And then we have a dx symbol here. Now, all you need to do is plug in the population mean, which you have, that's 75. You also need to plug in the standard deviation, which is 7, and then plug in A and B. In this case, A is 68, B is 82. And then just type that into the calculator, and that should give you the answer. So let's go ahead and do that. So the percentage of students with a test score between 68 and 82 is going to be the definite integral from 68 to 82. And then it's going to be e raised to the negative x minus 75 squared divided by 2 times 7 squared divided by 7 times the square root of 2 pi dx. So make sure to use these parentheses that I'm showing you when you're plugging into your graphing calculator. I'm going to show you how to use Wolfram Alpha towards the end of this video. So you can look for it then. So let's go ahead and plug this in. It's going to take me a while to type this in, so bear with me for one moment. And it's going to take a while for the calculator to get the answer to. So what I got is 0 0.68268 8949. So if you multiply that by 100, that's going to be 68.268949%. So as you can see, these two answers are not exactly the same, but they're close enough. So this is an approximation, and this answer is more accurate to the exact answer. So technically, it should be like 68.269 instead of 268. But if you round it to 68.3, then you should be fine. Now let's move on to our next problem, or the next part of this problem. That is part B. Approximately how many students have a test score between 61 and 89? So we're not looking for a percentage, but rather the number of students. And keep in mind, we have a total of 800 students in this class. So first, let's find the percentage as we did in part A. So the percentage of students with a test score between 61 and 89 is going to be, so we're starting at 61 and we wish to end at 89. So we need to find the area under the curve for that entire region. So basically, we need to add those four numbers. So we're going to add 13.591 plus 34.134 plus 34.134 again, and then another 13.591. And you should get approximately 95.45% because these two numbers, they're within two standard deviations of the mean. So that's always going to be about 95.45% whenever you have that situation. Now let's confirm this answer with a calculator. So we're going to evaluate the definite integral from 61 to 89, and then it's going to be e raised to the negative x minus 75 squared divided by 2 times 7 squared divided by 7 times the square root of 2 pi. So notice that this portion doesn't change because the mean and the standard deviation is the same for part A and B. The only thing that's changing is the limits of integration, A and B. That's all we need to change 
in this problem. So go ahead and plug that in. If you don't know how, I'll show you later at the end of this video. This calculator takes about five seconds to get the answer. So I got 0.95449736. So that's approximately 95.44997% if you multiply this by 100. So this answer is more accurate, but nevertheless, this is a good estimate of this answer. It rounds pretty well. Now, this is not the final answer for Part B. So what this means is that 95.45% of the class has a test score between 61 and 89. Now, there's 800 students. So what's 95.45% of 800? So what I'm going to do is take this number, because it's a more accurate value, and multiply that by 800. My calculator also has a 1 here. So if you take that number and multiply by 800, it's going to give you 763.6, approximately. Now, because we're dealing with people, we want to round to the nearest whole number. So we're going to say approximately 764 students have a test score between 61 and 89. So this is the answer to Part B. Now, let's move on to Part C. What is the probability that a student chosen at random has a test score between 54 and 75? So go ahead and work on that problem. So here's 54, and we're going to stop at 75. So basically, we need to add these three numbers. So the probability of selecting a student that has a test score between 54 and 75 is going to be, so we're going to add 2.14 plus 13.591 plus 34.134. And so you should get 49.865%. So that's an approximation, pretty much a good approximation. Now let's get the exact answer, or a more accurate answer, using calculus. So this is going to be the definite integral from 54 to 75 e negative x minus 75 let's not forget to square that divided by 2 times 7 squared that's a terrible looking 2 I gotta fix that divided by 7 times the square root of 2 pi dx And so I got 0 0.49865-0102, which is about 49.865% if you take this number and multiply it by 100. So this is a very good approximation. And so that's the answer for Part C. Part D, the last part of the problem. Approximately how many students have a test score greater than or equal to 96? So using the graph, what's the answer? So all we need is this region, which we can clearly see that it's 0.135%. Now, we're not looking for the percentage, but the number of students, which we'll get to later. So how can we get the same answer using calculus? So we know we need to calculate the definite integral from A to B. 
Now, we could see that A is 96, but we only have one number here, so what's B? What should we put for B? Now, if you're thinking of 100, you shouldn't use that. Because granted, most test scores are graded based on 100%. Like the highest value is 100, but sometimes teachers may have extra credit. So some students could have a, a score of 105 or 110. If you put 100 here, you won't get 0.135%. Let's call the function f of x instead of writing the whole thing. But I'm going to plug it in. So give me one minute to do that. And so if you integrate it from 96 to 100, you're going to get 0.00117238. So if you multiply that by 100, that correlates to 0.117% approximately, which is not the same as this answer. So what you need to keep in mind is that this goes to infinity, and the left side goes to negative infinity. So you have to integrate it from 96 to infinity. Now, this is going to be a problem because, for the most part, we can't plug in infinity into a calculator. So we can approximate the answer by picking a number that's... I need to get rid of this. We need to pick a number that is very high that can represent affinity. So 100 wasn't good enough. So let's pick a much bigger number, like 1,000. Now, the answer won't be exact, but it's going to be a very, very good approximation. So if you go ahead and plug this in, you should get an answer that's very, very close to this answer. So go ahead and type that into your calculator. Now, my calculator gave me this answer, 0 0.00139893. So multiply that by 100, and that's about 0.134989. And I'll stop there, percent. So this rounds to 0.135%. So that's a good approximation. Now, let's determine the number of students that have a test score that's equal to or greater than 96. So we're going to take this number and multiply it by the number of students in the class, 800. So 0 0.00134989903 times 800. You should get 1.0799. And so for this, we're going to round it to the nearest whole number. So approximately one student scored a 96 or more on his physics exam. So that's how you can use the normal distribution curve to answer problems such as this one. Now go ahead and open up your internet browser. I'm going to use the Google search engine. And then when you're ready, type in online calculator, definite integral. And then you can also type in Wolfram Alpha. So I'm going to go to this site, Wolfram Alpha Widgets Definite Integral Calculator. And you should see a page that looks like this. So type it in exactly the way I'm going to show it to you. So type in E and then Shift 6 to get the arrow. Negative parentheses. If you don't put the negative sign, you will get it wrong. X minus 75 squared, that's shift 6, and then we also need to open up another parentheses in front of the negative sign. So you need to open up two parentheses, keep that in mind, and then divide it by, open a new parentheses, 2, shift 8, that's the multiplication symbol, times 7 squared, close parentheses and close it again. This entire thing has to be on the exponent of e. That's why we have to open up 
an additional set of parentheses. And then divide it by, open a new set of parentheses, 7 square root SQRT, open parentheses again, 2 pi, 2 pi, and then close the parentheses twice. Now we're going to integrate it from 68 to 82, and then click Submit. So you can see the answer here, 0.682689. So that's about 68.269% if you multiply it by 100. Now the good thing about this is you don't need to type in the integral expression because that part is not going to change. The only thing you need to change are the limits of integration. So for part B, we need to find a probability from 61 to 89. So let's change these numbers and then just click Submit. And so we have 0.9545 or 95.45%. If you need more digits, click the more digits link here and then you can get a more accurate answer which we had 0.9544 997. And if you want more numbers beyond that, you can write to your heart's pleasure. Now let's move on to part C. So it was from 54 to 75. And so we did get this answer 0.49865. And to see a more accurate answer, 0 0.498650101 and we rounded it to 0, 02. At least my calculator did that. But we can leave it as 0.49865 or 49.865%. Now for the last one. Now I mentioned not to integrate it from 96 to 100 because it won't give you 0.135%. You need to go to infinity. So as you can see, 0 0.00117. So this is not an accurate answer. But as you increase this value, let's say to 105, it's going to approach a more accurate answer. Notice 0 0.00134. So it's getting close to 0 0.00135. So let's try 110. Now, notice that it's converging. It's getting closer to 0 0.00135. So we need to pick a large number that represents infinity. So we can try 1,000. So we get 0 0.003499. And you can select more digits if you want. Now, let's pick a number that's bigger than 1,000 to see if it's going to stay at this value, if it's going to converge to it. If the value changes, then we don't have the right answer. So if we go to 10,000, it might take longer to calculate. Notice that this number didn't change. Wow, it's loading. I guess it takes a longer time to go up to 10,000. But you can still round it to 0 0.00135. So if we go to 100,000, it won't change. That means your final answer is, if you multiply this by 100, 0.135%. Because 100,000 is a good approximation of infinity. And so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.